as you mentioned, I'm, I'm working with that very same uh, Singapore TVM environment, and I'm uh, working specifically with, with DAS data, so which is distributed acoustic sensing. And um, of course, this is part of that larger ongoing project um, uh, from the, you know, the team at NUS in Singapore. And um, so I'm uh, using a lot of their groundwork and their workflow and data, of course, for processing uh, their, their code, I should say, for processing the data for my research. Um, yeah, so as a brief overview, uh, I want to talk a bit first about the background of distributed acoustic sensing itself, um, a little bit about what we're trying to do with this research, um, and then I can share some of the workflow for processing the data and some of my initial results. So what is DAS? Uh, DAS is essentially using fiber optic cables as a kind of acoustic sensor, and you have a uh, DAS interrogator box that sends a laser pulse along your cable. Um, and then along the way, there's Rayleigh scattering that occurs. And you have some light that is backscattered back towards your source, towards the interrogator. Um, and in this way, when you have um, acoustic signals going off in your environment, um, you're able to measure this as uh, strain or displacement along your cable. So, this is that we have that exact situation going on over in Singapore. Uh, so you have uh, that beautiful giant TVM machine that is creating the subway tunnel, um, and about you know a thousand meters worth of uh, cable and tunnel there, and then it's wired through some unmonitored cable all the way back to the surface so that. Uh, office monitoring room where the interrogator would be located. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then it, of course the cable has to be coupled to the tunnel wall and some tape. Um, so why do this research? I think Arthur kind of helped illustrate some of the say pitfalls or dangers of tunneling and why it's important <laughs> to monitor the health. So of course, we want to understand that surrounding geological environment um, and specifically why using DAS uh, compared to, for example, the geothermal array, which is also being used there, is that uh, DAS has the great benefit of essentially having like a spatial res resolution of every two meters, a sensor along the entire length of the tunnel. And it's not quite analogous to having a geophone every two meters, it doesn't quite work like that, but you have this high resolution measurement and it's very continuous, which is great for that kind of uh, long term monitoring of the tunnel health. And so, what I'm specifically trying to do right now is just measure those uh, direct P wave arrivals. So, that is the, the P waves traveling straight from the source of the, the, the PDM cutter head right to the most immediate center or along the I should say along the direction of uh, the tunnel. So here's some of the workflow for the data processing and just to focus on the beginning, um, uh, I believe the there's a pulse rate frequency in that interrogator of like around 2000 Hertz, but we bring it down to around 500 uh, initially to down resample it. And then we look at the, we, we look at, um, selecting the portion of the data that is the mining data, which is to say that the TBM goes through a few different phases. Um, this includes some kind of a ring laying phase where it's actually constructing the concrete components of the tunnel itself, which is also produces noise, of course, but it's more ambient. So we want to highlight the more active mining phase. Uh, this, by the way, is a 2D spectrogram. We're taking that slightly processed raw data and we're doing a short time Fourier transform to get this power spectral uh, density, and this lets us easily see the mining phase. And then the next step in processing the data is kind of what uh, Bob talked about actually earlier with seismic interferometry. Um, and we're kind of using that array of sensors along our table and treating the, the um, I could say the first 
uh, sensor closest to the head as that kind of virtual source. And then it lets us create this shot gather, or I guess really virtual shot gather. Um, and it's also focused so that we move from 500 frames to not just to 250. And yeah, so this kind of tries to imitate uh, an active like seismic source uh, in creating a shot gather, but it's still a large frequency range and it's a little bit noisy. So to um, observe this further, I'm looking at this uh, dispersion spectrum and it lets us look at the changes in phase velocity of the frequency. Um, for example, we have this lower frequency band, which is likely to be the surface waves. And this is more of a point of interest for example, for the look ahead in the tunnel, which is a really important thing, but I'm uh, currently trying to focus on the somewhat higher frequency band um, that is a bit higher velocity than what you're supposed to be the surface waves. And then <laughs> one thing we theorize about this, uh, this area is that we have the body waves that are potentially propagating as guided waves, which is to say that they're moving through um, not just the surrounding geology of the tunnel, but also the material of the, of the tunnel wall itself, which is that reinforced concrete, as well as the, the grouty kind of um, uh, agent that seals the tunnel wall to the, to the rock. Um, and so to go back to the cross correlogram from earlier, the wiggle plot, so this is the same as before. Um, and then here on the right, we're focusing on that 50 to 75 Hertz uh, frequency range we filter to that and you can see it's a lot clearer and we can see more clean lines mm -hmm. we're kind of focused specifically on like the waves that are traveling through this the zero time because those would be uh, our direct p waves or you know, direct waves hopefully that uh, i'm trying to focus on so we can draw or what i did do is draw some lines just to get a very rough estimate of this velocity and um the velocity is changing as we kind of saw in the dispersion graph. Um, um, but this is essentially one uh, way that we begin to get a bit of a glimpse at those direct heat wave velocities. All right. And to summarize, um, yeah, so we're interested in understanding this tunnel environment. Um, both for the ongoing tunneling process itself and also for the long-term uh, use as, as a subway tunnel, of course, for the monitoring of the health. Um, I showed one method of visualizing some of the P wave velocity, but of course, I'm interested in a lot of other methods. And the big thing that I'm working or I wanna work on now that is really important is that we wanna take advantage of all these many hours and days of dash data that we have. Um, Right, because there's also there's a lot of different um, qualities to the different days of DAS data. We want to be able to have uh, information about different points in the tunnel, because the TBM is, of course, traveling along the tunnel over time. Um, we would like to even be able to measure um, perhaps a static location in the tunnel, given different days of data, because we have all the data. So, yeah, that's what I'm focusing on. Uh, thank you.